Okay, so here's my late vlog for the Civil War Part 2. Busy weekend. Um, there's one thing before I start. It's kind of weird that the last two episodes have been called the Civil War, even though the war is just now starting, it looks like. That's a nitpick, but still, found it a little odd. Um, so this continues where the last one left off. Uh, Cora's parents have been arrested by Unalak. She's dealing with that, and Tenzin's still looking for his daughter. I'll talk about for that first, because that's the simplest part of the episode. Um, Tenzin and his siblings had a falling out at the end of the last one. Uh, the, the two of them go back to the temple. He continues on his own. He finds his daughter playing with the most adorable bunch of Sky Bison kids. I, like, I, I, I swooned a bit <laughs> when they showed these Sky Bison babies. And the names, like, what is one of the Blueberry Munch? Something like that. Uh, just sickeningly sweet. Um, and we actually get a really good moment here with Tenzin, where, you know, you, you almost feel like his first instinct was to, like, from the beginning, his first instinct, when they find her, would be to yell, you know, what were you doing? You had your mother and I so worried, and... But he, he takes a moment when he sees his daughter there, and when his daughter asks, do I have to leave now? And he just sort of thinks, and he thinks back on what his siblings were saying about Aang not being there for them, and he's like, uh, no, I'd like to play too. And so he, he has this great, you know, couple of scenes where he sits down uh, and just sort of plays and talks over family a little bit with his daughter. Uh, it's a really nice moment. He reconciles with his siblings uh, when they go back. We get an interesting scene with Boomy talking to Aang's uh, statue in the Avatar room. <laughs> and, you know, apologizing, he's saying, I'm sorry I wasn't an airbender. Uh, it, was, it was an interesting moment. We're getting some good moments. Um... With, the, with this whole family, with the adults and, and with the kids. Uh, so that part of the episode is great. Now, as for the rest, so Cora's parents are under arrest. They're going to be put on trial with all the people who tried to capture Unalak. Um, and I'm forgetting Cora's dad's name now. Tarnok? Anyway. Um, so the Varus, the business guy, reveals himself. I love this guy. This guy is now, I think he's my favorite character of this season. Asami is still my favorite character of the show as a whole, but this guy's my favorite character of this season. <laughs> the scenes of him in Heidegger are fantastic. He's in a platypus, a platypus bear suit the entire time, and his assistant is in there, and is somehow able to make him tea inside the... <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so Varys turns out to be hiding out in a platypus, platypus bear suit, <laughs> He tells him that the trial is going to be rigged. He gives Boleyn a bunch of money to bribe the judge, and of course Boleyn completely misunderstands what's going on. It kind of bothers me that they're making Boleyn to be a bit of an idiot. That might change. I hope that changes, but it's still funny, uh, and the whole thing with him and Eska, but anyway. Um, so Varys and Asami and Mako and Boleyn are sort of, Boleyn are sort of a team now trying to figure out what's going on. By the way, another I, there, this season has had some great laughs so far. I love the one line where as there's a scene where before they find out that Varys was hiding in Asami's room, um, or no, I know I guess it was his room. I guess they were going there for me. So I think it is Varys's apartment. So it makes sense. Um, Eska and her brother show up. I can't remember his name. Uh, and they're speaking in their monotone. We are looking for Varys. He's a traitor, like our aunt and uncle. And Mako goes. Wait, Cora's parents have been arrested? And the brother says, Yes, your powers of deduction are impressive. <laughs> like, you just said it. Um, another great, I'll, I'll go back to, I'll get back to the twins later. Okay, so Varys reveals to them the trial's going to be rigged, and what a shock it is. Um, Cora's mother is set free, but the rest of them are condemned to death. Cora is, of course, very frightened about this, and so Unalak says, um, you know, don't worry, let me let me talk to the judge, and he goes over to talk to the judge, and the judge is like, okay, not death, but life imprisonment, and Corey's like, oh. So she then goes to visit her dad, tries to bust him out, and her dad says no, um, and it, it, this, I didn't realize how weird this was until Rob Walker pointed this out in his Facebook page. Her dad tells her, don't do anything rash. Like, trying to break me out. So the next thing she does is attack the judge with her pole, with Naga, and basically threatens him at, quote-unquote, Avatar gunpoint. 
to try and, and free her father, which is a stupid and rash thing to do. Um, but in doing so, he lets slip that Unalog has been plotting this the entire time. Big shock. Oh my god, Unalog's the villain. Who would have thought it? Um, and and this, this actually is sort of a twist. Uh, he does reveal that Unalok was also behind the attack that resulted in Korra's dad desecrating the Spirit Force. So the whole thing from the get-go, going back to before her dad was a father and still living in the North Pole, all of that was set up by Unalok to seize power. Not surprising anyone, but th this is the first time we've gotten con we've gotten confirmation of it. Uh, it wasn't official that Unalok had been behind everything. Most people probably suspected it, but now we know. Um, biggest issue with this is just how long it took Korra to figure, and how Korra could not figure out on her own that Unalak was basically, he is another Tarlock. He looks like Tarlock. It's almost the same. It's seizing power and using dubious means to keep Korra on the sidelines. And again, it does make sense. We've seen Korra be over-aggressive and over-assertive to the point of, to, to, to a fault. Um... And the only people who've really deferred to her have been Tarlock in Season 1 and Unalak in this season. They're the only people who've really have given her free reign, uh, even if it was for devious purposes. So it does make sense that she would be consistently falling for this. But now that she's fallen for it a second time, and now that her own family is in danger, please let this be the last time she has to go through this. Because like I said, we need, her to be a, we need her to be a smarter character if we're going to care. Um, yes, so that happens. She finally figures out that it's a whole conspiracy. Um, meets up with, teams up with, you know, Sami, Mako, Boleyn, and Varys, and I'm, I gotta learn the assistant's name. She's great, too. She's just totally straight-faced assistant to this crazy guy. Um, <clears throat> so they break onto the ship. Uh, they, oh, yeah, they, they find out that her dad and the prisoners are being sent to the north, uh, and she has a confrontation with Unalak, and doesn't overcome him, but, like, beats him enough that they can they can get, they can can get away. Uh, and Unalak has a very sinister line where he's like, you've already served your purpose, Avatar, so it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Again, we don't know what his connection is to the spirit world yet, or why he can manipulate them. That still has not been explained. Um... So they go off, they, they break onto the ship, they use Varus's super fast ship, Korra goes into the Avatar state to bend through the fleet, and it, it's a really interesting, it's a really great scene, they're on a plane. There's another great line where <laughs> Varus is driving the boat through the fleet, and one of them is like, look, like, gets a look at it through his, uh, his telescope, and the commander's like, what, who is it? Who's on that boat? And he just sees, <laughs> this is the shot of Varus in the platypus <laughs> bear suit, driving the boat, and he's just like, you're not going to believe this, sir. <laughs> I, I don't think I've seen a string of episodes in either Korra or Avatar that have made me laugh so much as the first four episodes of this season. Uh, the, the comedy has been really great. Um, yeah, so they get away. Uh, they free Korra's dad and her men. They go back. They're like, okay, we'll start a resistance. And Korra's like, I'll fight with you, of course. And I like this. Her dad says, no... You, the good that you can do as the Avatar is to get the other nations and the other governments on our side uh, so that they can intervene. Unalak can't stand up to all the na other nations of the world. Uh, so that's good again. And this time she does respect her dad's decision. You know, we can, there, there's, a bit of, there's a bit more maturity there than there was in the first couple episodes. Um, and again, I like that Kor is being told, look, no, fighting is not... Like, you fighting is not going to fix this. You need to do other... You, you, you need to play... You need you need to play softball right now. You need to play politics. Um, and maybe later do the spiritual stuff. We haven't gotten a lot with the spirit world yet, despite the South Pole Door thing, even though the book is called Spirits. Um, so I, I guess they're building that up as well. Um... So that's it. It ends with them riding off to. I think it's the government of the the United Republic that they are going to meet. Um, and there's a great one of I think one of the best final shots of any Korra or Avatar episode. 
Uh, they, they're like, who's that? And Bolin looks through the, the telescope, and it's Eska, just tearing across the surface of the ocean with this look of pure rage on her face, and her, like, makeup is screaming, and her face is like... <sighs> it's, like, this legitimately terrifying... It's the most terrifying thing I've seen in Avatar since the Puppet Master episode with that old lady. Her face is just twisted in rage. And Belin's like, Harris, can this boat outrun a water better? And he's like, why do you think I built it? <laughs> I wonder if there's a history there. Um, so that's great. So that that's a really great way to end the episode. What I think is going to happen is, Eska, I, this is my guess. This is totally my guess. Um, my guess is that Eska really does like Bolin. She has a terrible way of showing it, but Una locks her dad. You know, what do you expect? So I think that she actually does genuinely like Bolin, even though she treats him like crap. And she's really torn up about him leaving. So she's going to try and get him back. And that will end up, that will have her switch sides and work against her father. Or maybe give them some information about him. And her brother will follow her eventually, and he'll join them as well. Or, well, maybe there could be a falling out between the twins. I can't see that happening. Um, but I'm hoping this leads to... Like I said before, I either want to have... If they do go into the characters of these twins, I want it to either be like really clever and really well done, or I want them to just leave it. and Just, just leave them at these weird, mon monotone-speaking things. Um, yeah, that's about it. That I, I'm surprised this vlog has gone on this long. There's not a whole lot in this episode, or in the last episode. Um, they, they've been they've been quieter episodes. So, which isn't bad. They're good episodes, but the, the season hasn't really kicked off yet. A lot of interesting setup, but none of it's really gone anywhere yet. Um, yeah. So, we'll see where episode 5 goes. I still like this so far, uh, and I hope you're all enjoying it. And I hope that the few of you who are watching these are enjoying these vlogs. So, Mm -hmm. Until next week.